Yeah, I just want to say a massive welcome to the Life on Purpose podcast. My God, I'm so excited to be here. This is the perfect start of the week. <laughs> so great to connect. I've been following you for a while now. One of my friends put me on to you and you've been very inspirational for me on my journey. And I'm a big believer in the quantum field. And I know that it's a thing that most of us don't talk about. And certainly when I think of my family upbringing in Ireland, the word quantum, I don't think ever came into to any conversation. But in the last five years, it's came up a lot in my life. And I wanted to ask you questions and get to know more about what you do in the business world and with your own personal life as a mom and how that all ties together. So I guess the starting point would be, you know, I've understood you were in hospitality, right? And you'd, you'd start off in hospitality. To talk me through your experience in hospitality and then how that transitioned into doing what you do now, which essentially you run a multi-million dollar business from your kitchen table. Well, I did once upon a time. I, I've moved the kitchen table to the office. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yes. No, so I, um, that's true. I used to um, own an agency, a hospitality marketing and PR agency. And I really started that um, not on purpose, by accident <laughs> would be. Um, and I think that is actually the, the thread that you'll see throughout that those years. Um, I built that business um, from the kitchen table, mastering the art of pushing a stroller with the baby in it with my foot whilst typing emails. And um, that business accidentally exploded. Um, it became, um, yeah, quite big, a multinational, multi-million dollar business. We had offices in five different countries, staff everywhere. Um, and, um, yeah, I think I can say you're quite a force to be reckoned with within our little niche. Um, and I think that one of the reasons for that was because we were in a niche because, um, when I started, I think everyone proclaimed me crazy for wanting to start a hospitality marketing agency. There's no money there. They would never do that. What restaurant would do that? And by the time um, we, or by the time I sold it, no one would really open anything or launch a new brand without the support of an agency. So that was quite the journey. And I learned a lot, especially of what not to do, because I had zero experience. Let me be clear. I had an experience in hospitality, but I had no experience with an agency. I had no idea what I was doing, basically, which was a gift because I got to create what I believe was really needed instead of what it should look like. Um, but it, it wasn't an easy gift. It was a gift um, that was that was tweaked by falling flat on my face a lot. Um, I remember nearly going bankrupt. Um, I, I, I think I made every mistake in the book, um, which I'm very grateful for. But yeah, so that was that's kind of where I came from and how I accidentally stumbled or kind of like fell flat on my face time and time again, but fell forward. Um, and, um, and that led me to create a, a certain amount of, of quote unquote success, uh, which was perceived by the world. Like everyone is, is applauding you. It's like, oh, you're making this money. You have this big company, you have the flash office. And as successful as I may have been, I was also completely miserable. Um, it cost me. It, it cost me connection. It cost me that sense of purpose that um, that you are diving into. And um, when I sold it, my the one I had no idea what I was going to do because I sold it. This is all I'd done. I signed a non compete restriction of trade. Couldn't do anything with what I had built. But the one thing I did know is that. It, was never ever going to sacrifice um, that sense of purpose, of connection, um, of joy for this so-called cookie cutter version of success. And that's how I transitioned into what I'm doing now with the CEO. That's how I started supporting entrepreneurs with doing the same thing and 
I call that, you know, to go big and go home, to create that big impact, that big income, but also a big delicious life to match. Because so many people are struggling to make a living, but they're not actually living that life. There is no space for that. And I, I've been there. I've done that. And that's not a great t-shirt. It's not a look I'm uh, down for. So it's all about being unapologetically ambitious, but also uncompromising in your quality of life. Um, yeah, so that is what I do. There's so many, you know, I, I get to connect with so many CEOs, right, all around the world. And so many of them, you know, I'll say, what's your priority? What's your number one priority in life? And without a doubt, they always say, my family. I say, cool, high five, I love it. I say, okay, now let's look, do a time audit. Let's look at your last six months and let's look at where you spent your time. And without fail, like 80 to 90% of them spend between three and 6% of their time with their family. I was like, okay, so your priority is your family, but you're spending 90 odd percent of your time and your career. Something doesn't add up. So I truly feel that you're onto something special. So you became aware that, hey, something's not right. I'm out of balance. So for someone listening or watching, how can they know that life is actually out of balance? They are prioritizing the wrong things and their career is making their personal and family life suffer. Well, what are the, the red flags, so to speak? Oh, that's such an epic question. Um, well, I think what you just mentioned is a great red flag, especially for high achievers, data-driven people to actually look at where are you out of integrity? Like, where are your actions not matching your words? But you said, you know, this is my priority, but where are you spending your time? Often they, we say things we think we want or we think we should want because it looks good. But if you look where you spend your, your most precious resources, your time, your energy, and also your money, that's actually where, you know, the rubber hits the road. That's actually where you see where you're actually prioritizing. And we like to fool ourselves and create this, this version of ourselves that, that is socially acceptable and that's what we're supposed to say but in the end our actions say, speak much louder than those words so I would really do an audit and a check-in with yourself like where are you spending your time your energy your money and that might reflect back a picture that is not so easy to to swallow um, because it often doesn't align perfectly with what you say you want and who you say you're being and um, yeah, so a little alignment check in that sense, um, in terms of values is a huge one. And I think the biggest indicator, um, as simple, not easy, but simple as it may sound, is, is our feelings, is our emotions. Our, in the end, we know. We may like shut it down because we're in our heads and we're doing, 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 and we're keeping busy, keeping busy just to keep moving. Because if we stand still, God forbid, we might feel what's actually happening. But that feeling is there to tell you something. And being out of alignment and without wanting to get too woo, because alignment is just to, to the extent to which you, the choices you make, the person you are being is in line with who you truly are. Um, and you feel that if you're out of alignment, you get that yucky, like it's different for different people, but you get that like contraction instead of expansion. You get that feeling in your, the pit of your belly. You get the tightness around the jaw, the shoulders, and it's there to tell you something. So That's besides the alignment audit, actually check in, check in with your body. And this is something you can do, you know, whilst taking a dump, you know, like you don't need to like, sometimes people are like, well, I don't have time for a morning ritual. I don't either. I, I'm, I'm very impatient and I'm not, not spirit. This has nothing to do with spirituality. This is just checking in because we've really um, de-ranked the value of, um, of, our, of our knowing, of our body, of our experience, of our emotions, and really overvalued and inflated the, the, the weight we put on our mind. But our minds also where fear, ego, bullshit, all lives. So 
I would say those are two great, not just red flags, but also moments to check in, how to check in. If you're feeling, ugh, it's telling you something. So a great question I always ask myself and I plan my clients to also ask themselves when you're feeling that is, what is it that I'm pretending not to know? What is it I'm pretending not to see? Because we're good bullshitters. That's powerful. That really is. And I think of, you know, my own journey and I think of clients I work with when they are feeling the stress and they're, they're very focused on their careers, they feel that tension. They feel that stuff in the pit of their stomach, the, the stress. Now, the natural thing for a lot of them to reach for is alcohol, is smoking, is uh, recreational drugs, is toxic relationships, all of these things. So when people see the red flags, become aware what are a couple of other options other than those things I just named that they could do that would be better for them to move forward? Well, I think there's a lot. And I think as humans, we're a bit, um, we're light switch beings. We like to label things good or bad, light or dark. So I personally, I think the, the, the shame and guilt we sometimes feel around whatever numbing coping mechanism, whether it's drugs or porn or just keeping busy or what, whatever it is, because we're all human, right? Um, is often more detrimental than the actual vice you are choosing. So I, I'd love to reframe like what are better ways to do it because that implies that, that these things are wrong. I think nothing is wrong. Um, you just get to choose what is serving you in certain situations that might serve you really well, certain coping mechanisms or strategies you used. Um, so for example, I'm, I'm a recovering workaholic. In my past life with the agency, I was an absolute workaholic, living on adrenaline, caffeine, and just kept going. And that was my way not to have to deal with what was actually happening. Now, is that bad? It wasn't great, but it did serve me. Like it brought me really far. So instead of making that wrong, actually looking at, okay, thank you, serve me. What am I choosing in this moment? And there, there's a million things and it's very personalized what you can do instead of those bad or less effective maybe uh, options. What I do, and this sounds a little bit, stupid um but what i find and what my clients also find is when you're in it when you're in your shit when you're in your story um you don't want to do the stuff that's good for you mm -hmm. you can't even think of it because you're in it and it's so real and it feels so bleh. so when i'm when i'm feeling like shit um, what I really want to do is binge watch Netflix and order a pizza and drink a bottle of wine. All of the things that I know are not going to necessarily propel me forward, um, but I just can't think of anything else. So what I do and what my clients often do is we create a menu, like a feel good menu with all the stuff that makes us feel good and is good for us which is not always the same thing. And both get to exist because I don't believe in going all the way and only doing all the right things. So that list for me, that menu has, you know, spending time in nature. That for me is, I, 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 don't, I don't meditate like sitting down. I can't do it, can't get into it, but I will go for walks and that's my moving meditation or working out or um, taking a nap or I'll have a whole list of things that I know are either good for me or make me feel good. Um, and I've made a commitment. And I think that's a key word, commitment to myself, that when I'm in it, I need to do at least one of them. And um, what I always see is when, and I look at the list and I don't want to do any of them, right? It's like, ugh eat a salad, ugh, spend time in nature. Ugh, that's not what I want to do. Let's go out and party. You know, like, but I need to do at least one. And the funny thing is when you do the one, the next will seem easier and more within reach. And um, 
yeah, that's how I kind of um, force myself to snap out of it, but also set myself up for success. Because if I set myself up for with a standard, and we're really good at that as entrepreneurs specifically, right? I mean, as humans, but as specifically, we set ourselves up to fail or in the very best case, not to win. We have to-do lists that are this long that we know we'll never finish. So that at the end of the day, we get to have that little guilt trip of like, oh, I didn't do it again. We have these standards of I have to have a, you know, if I have to get up at 4.30 a.m. and then I have to do at least this and that and an hour of movement and an hour of reading and journaling and this. We have all these ridiculous standards that leave no room for humanity. And with that, we set ourselves up for failure, really. And I believe in, in, in setting the bar lower, but through that building that muscle that you've got your own back. I can, you can trust yourself. I've got you because I'm doing the thing. I am in integrity. I'm doing the thing I say I'm going to do. And I think that for me is more important and more empowering than setting some standard that I know I'm never going to get, but um, which gives me a little bit of a, of a, of a stick to hit myself with like, oh, <laughs> I didn't do it again. That's awesome. I love it. And when we talk about success, so how do you define your own success? Mm, that is awesome. Um, that's, that's actually a big chunk of what I do in, you know, I, I speak a lot and I have masterminds and I work with clients around quantum success. And what does that mean? And that means I believe success is as personalized as our fingerprints, what success is to me is not what success is to you. And what success is to me today is not what it will be next year. It's an ever evolving thing. Um, so again, it comes back to getting radically honest about what it is you truly want versus what you think you should want. And someone said to me recently, and that really stuck with me, is like, people don't ask for what they want. They ask for what they think they can have. And I was like, oh, we like, can I swear a little bit? I think of course, I have. swear as much as you want. We cock block ourselves so hard because we're like, oh, no, we can't have that. Or this is what success should look like because that's what my neighbors do. Or this is what my parents expect of me. Or this is what I'm trying to prove to someone. So really getting radically honest with what it is you want. And to me, that starts with getting radically honest with what you want to feel and be and experience because quantum success and creating a quantum business means creating a business that's inside out where your business becomes a vehicle to create the experiences, the life, the, the, the person you want to be instead of vice versa, which it usually is. And in my you know, past life, it certainly was where my business dictated who I was being, what the quality of my relationships was, um, how I was feeling, what my experience was. I was, I was my business's bitch, basically. And I was doing so well. I had all the things, um, but, um, but it owned me. I didn't own my business. My business owned me. So I think getting clear on your own version of success starts with getting clear on what is it that you actually ultimately want to feel and be and experience and then also having the balls to to own that and what i mean by that is um that may not be something that is wildly celebrated by you know your environment or understood by your environment it doesn't matter a great example um that i love to give is like i was so excited last year I got, I got a car and I got my dream car and everyone was asking me like, Oh, did you get a Tesla? Did you get a Range Rover? Like these big status symbols, which for me, I don't care about. Like, I'm not saying it's bad or good. Like I love that. But for me, I don't care about, I'm like, no, I got my dream car. I got a mini with a tent on the roof. Yes. <laughs> And everyone's like, really? Like you're like, like Mr. Bean kind of like, yes, exactly <laughs> like Mr. Bean. But it's about um, daring to, 
to own that, to be like, no, that is what makes me happy. And if a Tesla truly makes you happy or a Range Rover, amazing, then get that. But getting really um, true to yourself and, and letting go of that societal standard, because the societal standard is broken, right? The paradigm around success is absolute bullshit, because basically what it says is you're either successful but miserable, because you have to sacrifice everything in the pursuit of this unattainable version of success or attainable version. But once you get there, you're like, what was the point? Or you're very heart centered, but broke as fuck. <laughs> and like, those are the two options. And that is the paradigm I'm here to, to shatter, not to shift, like absolutely shatter because you do get to create both. You get to create that success and, and live a delicious life and not have to pay in, in terms of ambition. Because often people are like, well, if you just want a more balanced life, just, you know, tone it down and, you know, take some more time. And no, like I'm, I'm an ambitious person. I love being an entrepreneur. I love building things, creating things. And, um, and you do really create, you get to create both. That's so cool. And I really feel like, you know, the media, Netflix, everything we watch, the things we read, they are dictating what success is to us if we let it. So how does one detach from the bullshit that is being fed to us around what our lives should look like and we should buy Teslas and all that stuff? How do we detach and start that process of working towards a quantum business with quantum success? Well, I think it starts with getting leverage on yourself in the sense that how's it working out for you? Like, how is it working out for you following everyone else's standard, which, by the way, isn't really everyone else's standard. It's that they're buying into the same thing. Um, you need to often, as unfortunate as it, as it is, you need to get uncomfortable. You need to get a little uncomfortable. Otherwise, why are you choosing this? So I think it's really clear to get there, really important to get some leverage on why are you choosing to shift this? Because change, and especially like change on this level, um, isn't always easy, isn't always fun. So that means you need to have some skin in the game. So what is the leverage? Who wins when you win? Like, how will your life be different if you actually shift that? But also, who loses when you keep this behavior up? Think about, you know, your kids, your partner, your family, your community, knowing that perhaps perhaps just the world for knowing that you're sitting on something that you're not sharing because you're making it about you so start with by getting some clarity and leverage on yourself and like why am I actually wanting to shift this and knowing are you more a carrot or a stick person so which of those two propels you forward the most like I'd love to think that I'm a carrot person but I'm not like I have my vision of who wins when I win, but on the days where shit gets bad and I just don't want to do it, I'm like, oh, the vision, it just seems too far away. Where the, the pain, the stick, it's like, oh, fuck, I better get out of it. Like, you know, for that. And knowing that about yourself is really useful. Um, and then from there on the next step, and which is actually the first pillar in, in quantum business and creating your quantum business success is really connecting to that, um, to what it is you want to feel, be, and experience. So what I always do and what my clients always do in the, in the mastermind is we create a, a list of three words, no more than that, of what is it for the next period of time. I always say more or less six months, but you know sometimes things shift so rapidly when you're doing this kind of work that you're in it for like two, three months and you're like, my whole reality has shifted I need a new set of words that you want to, what is it that you want to feel, be, and experience? And that shifts the words that I'm, um, that are the foundation of my quantum success today are very different from a year ago, which is great because it means I'm constantly turning what used to be my ceiling into my floor and then my ceiling into my floor. And, and that's it, right? It's an ongoing game. It's not, um, you're not going to get there get there, whatever that means, and be like, well, now I'm done. I love it. And the word quantum itself. So to explain that to someone who's not experienced it for 
before. What does quantum mean to you? Well, to me, and that's not going to be the, the scientific definition, so bear with me here. But to me, the foundation of, of, of working with the quantum is we are energetic beings, whether you are spiritually inclined or not, like we are all energy. You can feel energy much faster and much stronger and much louder than anything I can ever say or write. Um, just think about, you know, um, walking into a, into a room full of people and you can just feel there's something off or someone talking to you and saying the right things. They're saying the exact words, but you know there's something not right. We are energetic beings. We feel an energy is like a certain frequency. Every emotions, different emotions have different frequencies. This is scientifically proven. It's really interesting. There's an experiment. I do not know whose it is, so I'm sorry. But if you are, for example, think, holding up your arm and thinking about something really shameful and dark for you, like literally, and you're told to keep your arm up, I can easily push it down. Whereas if you're um, told to do that same thing and think about the thing that gives you the most joy and pride, like, you know, I'd say, like, think of your son, like, honestly, you can't. Like, it actually, that frequency of emotions also has a physiological impact on our body. You know, in the end, our body remembers what the mind forgets. Like we don't give it enough credit, but there is so much stored there. So quantum business and quantum success to me is taking the whole, the whole into account in a holistic way. And when I say holistic, I don't mean like let's, well, not for you, but for me, let's not ever shave our legs again and just wear like socks and sandals if not, and sing Kumbaya. <laughs> um, you can, like if that's your jam, you can. But holistic in the sense that we, that old version, that old paradigm around success is so fragmented. It looks only at money, status, power, You'll never hear someone say, oh, so-and-so is, is so incredibly successful. They have such beautiful, deep relationships with their friends. They are um, so feeling so vital and energetic in their body. No, that's not what success means in our dictionary. So the quantum is taking into account the whole being, all of it, and not outweighing one side over the other. Also not negating in one side don't get me wrong I like creating money I like doing business I like all of that part it is a really important part of who I am but there is so much more so that goes for like the whole being it goes from the physical the energetic and really pulling that together and leveraging that using it to your advantage because we have these amazing tools we have this amazing intuitive knowing. We have this body that literally can give us valuable information. Um, and we have these parts of our lives and of our being that are equally um, powerful and useful in different times. So when I talk about creating a quantum business, it means a business that is built from the inside out, that comes from that place of truth and knowing. And... Um, and just kind of beams out from there energetically and through aligned committed actions, because it's not just about sitting there and, you know, visualizing it and, um, and just hoping it will fall into your lap. It is that, you know, I call it flustle. It's a sweet spot between flow and hustle <laughs> and taking aligned committed actions towards your dreams and your visions, but also leaving space for that flow and for that feeling. Cool. I love that. And, there is a lot, you know, of people talking about uh, visualization and uh, really get, getting that vision strong, but they don't often talk about, okay, once you've visualized it and there's a strong emotional connection to that, you got to go and get to work. You got to go big, right? Yeah. So for you, when you go big, you also go home. So we know that saying go big or go home. You, your motto is go big and go home. Talk to me about the go home part. I know, I know that you're a mom. So tell me a little bit about the importance of being able to go big and serve an impact through your business, but also to 
go home and connect and love? What, how, how do you do it? And what does it mean to you? Well, I think you cannot go big if you don't truly really go home. And I don't mean literally per se going home also, um, but we don't go on a cross country road trip expecting the car to go without stopping at a petrol station. We don't, like you wouldn't even consider it. But for some reason, when it comes to ourselves and especially in the role as entrepreneur, we expect ourselves to just keep going and keep going and keep going and keep giving. Now, as much as we can fool ourselves into thinking that we are actually being of service, if we are not taking care of ourselves fully, we can fully show up and serve. So actually you're, be, you're, you're being a dick. You're actually doing everyone a disservice. It's not even about you. It's not um, even about, you know, people all, often find like, oh, but that's selfish to put myself first. No, it would be selfish not to. If you truly believe you're here to make an impact, you're here to make a difference, you have something to share that has the potential, even if it's just to positively impact one person, it's your obligation to show the fuck up. And you're not really showing up if you're not taking care of all of you. So that's what going home means to me. And, and that was a very hard lesson for me to learn because again, my, in my old life, that was not at all the way I operated. And it seemed like weakness. It seemed like it seemed counterproductive. And for me to realize that um, taking a nap, or turning off my phone for a, for a week and, or spending time, really like present time with my kids um, is actually a best practice in my business. And it required that reframe because I would show up for my business regardless. So to go back to the example, for example, um, a, a morning ritual, which... I'm not a, again, not a big fan of, but I do really believe in the importance and the incredible power of starting your day with intention and not just kind of belly flopping through the day. So I wanted to do it, or I said I did, but I never ended up doing it. This goes back to what we we're talking about before. I said I wanted to do the thing, but my actions and where I spend my time and energy showed the opposite. So I needed to get some leverage in. I needed to get some skin in the game because I wasn't doing the thing. So for me, that meant turning it instead of a morning ritual into my first my morning meeting and scheduling it in my calendar. Every day I have a 15 minute morning meeting scheduled with myself because for a meeting I'll show up. Yeah. Right. So that I think is a really important part of, um, of, of going home and making sure you, again, set yourself up for success. So getting clear on what are the things you really need and getting honest about that. Because, you know, we live in, in a crazy time where needing sleep is, is, is almost considered a weakness. And or, or not sleeping is, is or stress is a status symbol. Like, oh, look at me. I'm so bu being busy is a status symbol. That it makes no sense. It's like saying, oh, I'm ill. Isn't that great? Like, it's just a really messed up uh, definition that we've come to accept and has become the norm. So, yeah, really getting clear on what is it that you need? And then on top of it, I'm a big fan of getting clear on what is it that you want? Mm. Because yes, you may need those things. Okay, I need a certain amount of hours of sleep and I need to spend time with my family and this is what I'm choosing. But what do I actually want that is maybe less justifiable? You know, okay, sleep I can get away with and making sure you, you yeah, it's, it's so cliche, but you fill that cup because from that space, you become a weapon. You become unstoppable. You become one of my goals is to be a source of light 
for whoever I get in contact with, whether that is the person in the supermarket, um, a client, I just want to be a positive impulse, impact thing in people's experience. Um, I can't be that if I'm not recharging. Mm -hmm. And I don't even really like the word recharging because that applies, that implies that you first run out of energy. So that's, that's what going home um, means. And it's such a game changer because I'm, like you said, I'm a mom, I'm a single mom. And I, I built that whole business with little babies and little kids. And I feel like I, like I sleepwalked through their early years. Like I was there. I remember going home every day to make sure that I'd be home to have dinner and bathe them and put them in bed. And then I'd go back to work and I was there, but I wasn't there. So whether that is, you know, being truly present with your kids and being able to enjoy that um, or getting a massage or actually doing the raw and shitty inner work sometimes um, it's all part of the deal. And you That's can, so beautiful. yeah. That's amazing. We need more of your energy. We need more of your light. And it's so interesting when you talk about going and doing your shopping or your supermarket, you know, when you're right at the supermarket and you're interacting with people, that's the time when I'm most present with other people's energy. I'm taking it in and trying to be what you say and, and connect with them and smile and connect. But there's so much negativity in society and people are stressed out when they're shopping for their apples and bananas. I'm like, wow, we need a big check on our attitudes, a big check on perspective. And the more and more I talk to people, and I love to ask people questions, I don't care whether they are a billion dollar CEO, whether it's someone I meet who's working in a supermarket, or someone who's sweeping the streets, I want to chat, I want to know what you're doing and what's motivating you. So a lot of people who are unhappy, professionally, they're like, yeah, but I'm stuck here for life. Like, I, I can't do that. Like, actually, I don't know what I want. I don't know. I don't know what I would move to. I don't know what skills I've got. For those people, what advice do you have for those who feel stuck, who feel not enough, who feel like they don't know what they want? What would you say or what would you ask them? Such a good one. Um, here's the thing. Feeling stuck. And now I'm, go now I'm going to be like a bit of a dick, but feeling stuck is a choice. Um, and it can seem very real and feel very real but it's also a very comfortable place to hide because if you're stuck, it's like you're the weather reporter, right? You're, you're reporting on something, but you have no control over it because it's scary to take ownership because once I actually identify, it's not even about identifying because there's always this deep knowing it's about daring to access that and then daring to actually speak it. Once I speak it, my ass is on the line. Because now all of a sudden, I'm responsible for the gap between where I am today and where I want to go. Mm. So if I stay stuck, it's not me. It's the weather. It's the rain. It's the wind. Like, I can't help it. It's just happening to me. Where if I say, hey, this is actually what I desire. This is what I'd actually love my life to be like. And you can ask yourself very specific, like smaller micro questions and like, what would you... What time would you like to wake up? What, what does your environment look like? You can really support people in getting clear on that vision. But I don't believe they don't know. I believe they don't know how to access that or they don't remember or they don't dare to say it because their ass will be on the line or it won't match with society's version of what their life should look like. Um, so my advice to them would be start, start to dream a little and you can do it in secret. You can do, you can write it down. No one needs to know in the beginning because we build worlds with our words and whether we speak them or think them or write them down, we start shifting something. So we start moving into a sense of possibility. So start dreaming. And again, don't ask for what you think you can have, ask for what you really want. Um, 
and when I say ask, it's, it's, it's just, you know, dream it up. You, in the end, I really believe we are the creators or at least co-creators of our own reality. That doesn't mean life doesn't life. Like shit happens to each and every one of us. Um, so let's be very clear, but we get to be so intentional. And it's, it's, it's ridiculous sometimes to see the stuff you can really dream up. And it is as simple as just kind of quietly starting to think about it and giving it shape and form. So a great example is um, last year, January, January 2020, I made like a vision board, kind of like a mood board of what I wanted my, my year to be like, my life to feel like. Now, this was not at all realistic. It had a lot of things that could never happen in a year, but this was just, it gave me that feeling. It put me in that energy and that vibration of what I wanted to create. And then I forgot about it because I made it on my computer. It's not that I was on my wall and I looked at it. It was just somewhere on my computer. And fast forward 11 months to December last year and I had just moved into my new house, mid place. And, um, and I was sitting, I was actually sitting downstairs because the internet wasn't set up yet. And I was cleaning up my desktop. Um, because I'm, I'm, I'm one of those 500 tabs open, <laughs> 20,000 screenshots on my desktop. I'm like, okay, it's time. Um, and I found the vision board and I was looking at it and I was looking at one picture in particular of my dream home. I was looking at the living room picture that I'd gotten off Pinterest somewhere and then looking to my right to the house I'd just moved into five days before. And I'm like, had to do a double take. I'm like, this is legit the same space. It's the same space. Actually, this one's a little bit better that I'm sitting here right now. And I believe that it is little things like that, daring to dream, because that, that, that house that I picked was completely out of reach, not trying to figure out how you're going to get there, but just starting to allow yourself to to paint a picture, whether you do that in visuals or in words, um, but, but, but give it shape, like write, like put it in the 3D, not just in your head and, and dare to dream it um, because you'll start noticing when, once you have that picture clear, you'll, you'll automatically move in that direction. You'll, you'll automatically, you, you might not know how you're going to get there, because you're stuck after all, right? Mm -hmm. You don't need to know how, you need to know what, you need to know where you're moving towards and then just start to start taking little micro steps towards it. And often a little micro step towards it is just recognizing in which ways it's already there because that's the like spoiler alert, it is already there. Whatever you're moving to is just more of what's already there and the more you can actually see it and and lean into it the ease the more accessible it becomes it's kind of like when you're trying to quit smoking and all of a sudden everyone on the street seems to be smoking or you're looking to buy a specific car and all you see is that car around right we don't see the world as it is we see the world as we are so starting to focus on what it is you want to create you'll start to see clues you'll start to see little breadcrumbs and one of my favorite all-time quotes is by a lady called Rebecca Campbell and she says she's speaking about purpose but I think this is true for nearly everything is that if you're just brave enough to follow the breadcrumbs of what lights you up you'll inevitably end up lighting up the world around you and I love that because it breaks it down from I'm here now and th my vision is there and I can't get there. I'm stuck here. And this just seems so impossible. You don't need to know how to get there. You just need to be brave enough to follow the breadcrumbs. And trust me, the breadcrumbs are there the minute you open your eyes to them. That's stunning. I love that quote. I'm going to write that one down. That's seriously beautiful. It's awesome. I love it. And may I ask, what are you dreaming about right now? What are you wanting? What is it that you want in the next 12 months, the next 18 months? What's, what are you thinking about manifesting right now? It's so funny because I've always had like every year, very concrete, bigger, more this, that. And this year I've gone completely in the opposite direction, meaning 
more by doing a much less. Um, so I've really simplified um, my business, my businesses. You know, I have, um, I'm, I'm really working towards building an amazing team in my affiliate business that really is scalable and grants me that freedom to not have to show up because I feel I want to show up because I want to and not because there's a need to sell something or to do something. Um, what I'm dreaming of, I, I think I'm going to buy this house, which is completely ridiculous because it's, in, it's completely ridiculous. It's an amazing house in an amazing area um, with an amazing rent. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to buy this house. Yes, you are. Good. Oh, don't know how. Doesn't matter. I'm just ready for the breadcrumbs and following them. Um, I'm going home. I'm going to see my family. Cool. That is something I'm really uh, uh, manifesting. Um, Beautiful. Yeah, just um, more constant flow of, uh, of abundance, financial abundance, all, all the different abundance um, with um, less constriction in how to show up and really showing up just from oh, I have something I want to share but the money's just flowing in um, and the funny thing is when I dreamed that up early January when I had a session like this with a bunch of girlfriends I'm like but how that makes no sense wait I want more money to just flow in automatically but not do any of the work don't think about the how it will it will reveal itself and here it is Amazing. So, yeah. that's so cool and for people who are listening that feel inspired by what you do and who you are how can they connect and what could you offer them to, to come and learn from you and be a part of your your program and become part of your life oh yeah that's awesome yeah um well they can connect with me through instagram i think is the best uh, way so my company name is the ceo which has those two moving parts, the strategic of the CEO and the more mindful of the own. So that is also my Instagram handle. It's c.e.ohm, C-E-O. Um, so connect with me there uh, for sure. Um, I do, I have a few, very limited, but I have a few one-on-one -on -one, uh, coaching spaces where we really do a deep dive um, with, um, with different entrepreneurs, one-on-one um, -on -one specifically working on what it is you are trying to move towards or move away from or both. Um, and then I have this awesome quantum business mastermind, which is a three month program. We are just finishing up the, the second round. It just blows me away every time the, 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 the co-creation, the collaboration, the magic that happens in that space. So there's a new round starting in June. Um, so I can send you that link. It's called the quantum business mastermind. Um, yeah, you can also find it on my Instagram. And yeah, and if you ever want to know more about automated income to support, just drop me a line. It oh, can. Amazing. I love it. And the masterminds, I run my own mastermind here in Christchurch as well. So tell me a little bit about your mastermind. So if somebody's out there going, what's a mastermind? If they haven't read Think and Grow Rich, they should probably definitely do that. But uh, what does a mastermind mean to you? Yeah, so it's, it's basically a group coaching program for entrepreneurs worldwide. So we've had people, that's what I love also about what I do, from you know, New Zealand, Australia, the States, Europe, Middle East, Africa, all coming together, all in different industries, um, but meeting each other in... In, the, in similar in similar challenges, similar struggles, similar wins. And it's, it's always mind blowing to see how much we actually are the same and how much each of us go through life in everything, but also in business thinking that we are unique and that we have to you know, bear that weight and carry that cross all by ourselves where, um, I think biggest power, like the quantum business mastermind, there's a lot of teaching around quantum business, the six pillars around that. There's coaching, hot seat style coaching. 
But I think one of the biggest um, takeaways is that connection and is that having that safe space, because let's be real, especially as entrepreneurs, we, we carry a lot. And just because we carry it well doesn't mean it's not heavy. And there's often not really a space to just surrender and be and be vulnerable because with your peers, you don't, re- you, you don't really want to do it because you never really know. With your team, you still have that like role of leadership that you want to maintain where, that might hold you back from like b- really being vulnerable and real about what's going on. With your partner and family, you know, there comes a point where like you're talking about the business again um, and we like to think that no one really understands us. So to have, besides all the amazing content, which honestly is, is game changing in itself, but I find that almost to be the most powerful part that I see in these groups, to have that space where you can just unclench and step into that student role and be supported and be seen in all of it, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Oh, it's just, it's just powerful. That's amazing. Well, I hope people that are listening, please go and connect with CE Ohm on Instagram. Anything that I'm putting this out on, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, I'm going to put your details in there so people can go and connect with you, find out more about your mastermind and all your different products. So thank you so much, Yela, for taking the time to connect today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. This was such a joy. I'm really like ready to start my Monday now. Go for it. Have the most amazing week. Right back at you. Thanks so much, James. Really appreciate it. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the content today, please smash that subscribe button below. And if you want to become part of my community, I've got an amazing free Facebook group. Please come and join us. The link is in the description below. And also, if you've got any questions about today's session, I'd love to know. Just comment below and I'll be sure to get back to you guys. Have the most amazing day.